So over the past couple of years, one of the stocks that has been the most heavily requested for me to review on the channel is definitely Spotify, ticker symbol SPOT. And there's several reasons for this. Of course, you guys might know that Spotify is the number one largest music streaming platform in the entire world. They're also making some huge moves to keep the disruption going like for example, signing Joe Rogan to, to an exclusivity deal worth over a hundred million dollars just to have his podcast exclusively on Spotify, which by the way is available in video too now, not just audio. And all of this is bringing over a ton of new users to Spotify, myself included, we'll talk about that. Uh, but the result is that the stock skyrocketed in 2020, really took off. And then here in this year, the stock actually proceeded to crash back down by around 40% after all of that kind of initial hype and excitement kind of died down. And the question of profitability, I should say the lack of profitability, really came into deeper focus as we move forward. And so the question remains, is now perhaps the perfect time to be buying Spotify stock? Well, I'm gonna do my best to address that question. I'm gonna share my opinion. We're gonna take a look at the stock and everything that Spotify is doing as a company right now, how they're performing and where I think they're headed in the future. And of course, as always guys, I'll let you know if I plan to buy Spotify stock anytime soon myself. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's go ahead and start by taking a quick look at uh, the company. We'll talk a little bit about the stock as well, and then we'll transition over to where I think they're headed in the future. Okay, so just starting with like a quick little bio. So in terms of what Spotify offers, they have both a paid premium service where you pay a monthly fee to avoid commercials and get unlimited listening and skips and all of that good stuff. And then they also have a free version that includes commercials and limits the amount of content that is available to you. But that kind of one-two punch has been very successful for them as they now have over 158 million paid subscribers and a grand total of 356 6 million monthly active users that includes the free users as well which by the way this is absolutely gigantic i mean you're talking about more people than even the entire united states population that's huge now on top of that excuse me they also operate in 178 different markets which i believe are mostly counted as actual countries and that's also huge because there's like less than 200 countries in the entire world so you can pretty much consider spotify to be something that is available everywhere in the world, although they're still kind of trying to tackle like Asian markets and things like that. I'll kind of briefly mention that a little bit later in the video. But uh, as far as contents goes, they've got over 70 million music tracks and already over 2.6 million podcast episodes, all of which has led to them having by far the most market share in the entire world. In the first half of last year, Spotify controlled almost 35% of the entire market according to CounterPoint Research. Now that's not to say that there isn't some serious competition out there, notably Apple Music and Amazon's Prime Music. I would say those are the two biggest threats at around 21% and 15% market share respectively. And the difficult thing about those two in particular is that they do a great job of selling a family of products and services that convince users to buy into their kind of like entire ecosystems, which makes it harder for Spotify to convince any of those users to switch over to their platform instead. Apple gets you by selling their massively popular iPhones, along with various other products like iPads, MacBooks, Apple Watches, Apple TV, and so on. And they add on all of their various services to get you entrenched into that ecosystem, which of course includes Apple Music. And then you've got Amazon. They get you by convincing you to buy into the Prime family, which is usually uh, bought for just like the Prime ship being on the Amazon shopping website, which has already surpassed over 200 million people, by the way. And all of those users also get access to Prime Video and Prime Music, which they can then try to sell upgrading plans to, like for getting rid of advertisements on Prime Music along with other premium features. But it doesn't just stop there. You also have strong competition from the likes of Tencent Music, which is huge in China. And then there's still YouTube Music, although really the music part is pretty far behind, but the bigger threat there I think is YouTube, just for the fact that so many people use YouTube in general, which takes more, more of their attention away from Spotify and especially when it comes to video podcasts that Spotify is now trying to break into. So each of these giants really pose a unique threat to Spotify, 
you kind of pretty much have like Apple and Amazon, you're primarily talking about that ecosystem threat. Then you've got Tencent, you're talking about that massive Chinese market threat. And then with Google and YouTube, you're talking about just an attention kind of grabbing threat in general, and especially through video and podcast. Still, Spotify is doing everything they can to stay on top. And I have to admit that I am a fan of the moves that they've been making lately. My favorite of which was implementing video into the platform, which I feel dramatically increases your addressable market. And the other thing, that I like is the signing of major podcasters to exclusivity deals, like for example, the biggest podcaster in the world in Joe Rogan in a deal that was worth over a hundred million dollars. And these type of moves are convincing a lot of people to switch over to Spotify, including myself. I mean, I literally signed up for Spotify premium just because of the Joe Rogan show. Cause I figured, you know, I used to use Amazon prime music, but I figured I might as well just have everything in one place and, and switch over to Spotify since I literally watched like almost every single episode of the Joe Rogan experience. And I can tell you that I'm definitely not the only one. If you look at the top 50 most listened to US podcasts of 2020, Joe Rogan is all the way at the top at number one. So it's clearly a gigantic show and one that will definitely help Spotify's user account grow. And like I said before, they're doing this with other big podcasters too, not just Joe Rogan. In fact, they recently signed Dax Shepard, who usually has like a top 15 podcast as well. And we'll talk more about the growth that Spotify is experiencing in just a second when we dive deeper into their business and performance. But first, I just want to quickly touch on the stock to see where we are right now and what kind of valuation we're dealing with. Now, Spotify IPO'd back in 2018, and since then, the stock had actually been either stagnant or even trending downward. That is until around the midpoint of 2020 when they signed Joe Rogan and started implementing videos and all of a sudden the stock skyrocketed from a low of around $110 a share when the market had crashed because of the global health issue to a high of around $387 a share for an increase of over 250%. That's a massive run up. And even if we count it from when the Joe Rogan deal was announced at that time, the stock was trading for around $200 a share. So even from there, it's still nearly doubled all the way to the top. Since reaching those highs though, the stock has corrected back down, falling by around 40% to just $232 a share, which is a lot closer to those pre-Joe Rogan levels. Still, even here, the valuation is very expensive. Now, I don't say that necessarily from a market cap standpoint. At around $46 billion, I actually think that's more than reasonable. I know this is subjective, but just imagining the world leader in music streaming and an up-and-comer in video and podcast, I actually think that type of company could easily be worth over $100 billion. But really, the concerns come from the lack of profitability, which means we can't value them on a price to earnings ratio and instead we have to rely on price to sales which is usually good at around one but spotify is more than four times larger than that at around 4.5 granted usually high growth companies tend to have higher ratios there but still i mean it is kind of high now to give you some context even amazon with its gigantic and much more diverse size not to mention that they even own prime music as a competitor they have a PS ratio of only less than four. So if you're just going based on sales and you don't already own Amazon stock, well then you should probably just be buying Amazon instead before you consider Spotify because they have the better ratio, they have the much larger, more diverse company and they have a profitable business. Although in reality, you could just own both but I'm just trying to kind of illustrate a point here that Spotify stock is indeed expensive, especially to a more value oriented investor who likes to see profits or at least a low price to sales ratio. In any case, when looking deeper into Spotify's financials, we can see that they typically lose hundreds of millions of euros a year on a net income basis. By the way, we're using euros uh, because they're technically a Swedish company. But in any case, with younger companies like this, I tend to focus more on operating cash flow just because I like to see how profitable the raw business is right now at an operating level. And there they actually do consistently bring in hundreds of millions of euros in profit every year. The problem with Spotify though is that they have to reinvest all of that money back into the business so that they can keep acquiring content in order to stay on top and they have to pay licensing fees and all that stuff. It really adds up. And on one hand, that does mean that it, it could be a while until they become profitable. 
On the other hand, it also leaves you with a pretty high growth company. So I guess kind of take it how you will. But the point is, this is an unprofitable company that has to spend a lot of money in order to keep the growth going. Now, revenue usually grows by around 20% a year, which is pretty good. And I actually think there's a lot of ways that they can even increase that in the future, mainly through more digital advertisements on the platform or by convincing free users to upgrade to the premium version, which we know there's a huge pool of those free users to tap into because all of the all of the things that you're still able to do for free that convinces people to use even the free version this year spotify is expecting to grow their overall users to over 400 million at an increase of over 20 percent year over year and yet out of that gigantic pool only around 170 million will actually be paid subscribers so literally less than half of all their users that means there's tons of room to grow that number which is really important because when you look at how their revenue breaks down between paid users and free users, which is basically just like advertising money for the free users, well, about 8.2 billion came from paid users last year, while only around 850 million came from advertisements, meaning that 90% of all their revenue actually comes from paid users, but only around 10% comes from free users, even though free users is the much higher, you know, giant number in terms of uh, actual users. In other words, let me just kind of try to uh, simplify this a little bit. You can bring in huge growth from either of two different ways. One is from converting the free users to paid users, which we have more than double of to convert, or you could just increase your advertisements on that giant pool of free users, or even increase your prices for them, and that would also generate huge growth. Plus, most of these users we're talking about here are in Europe at around 35%. So there's probably some decent growth to be had outside of that too, especially if they ever really figure out a way to compete more heavily in Asian markets as well. Overall though, I think there's a lot of reasons to be optimistic about Spotify's future growth. And like I said before, there's still the possibility that they become a bigger player in video and in podcasts too, which would be yet another source of growth. In the US, Spotify is the second most used app for listening to podcasts with 22% market share, which is up from 15% the year before. I'm guessing Apple Music is probably number one because of iPhones. But then when you single out for just Androids, Spotify actually comes in at number one with 23% market share, which is up from 18% the year before. And among the key millennial demographic of age 18 to 34, Spotify comes in at number one with a massive 43% market share. So you're already seeing some pretty nice dominance uh, from Spotify in the podcast world, but also there's still room for growth as well in kind of all areas. Now, one big concern I do have though is that large competition. We gotta come back to it because it does seem to be slowing them down. When you look at their market share over the years, back in 2015, among paying music stream, streaming users, it was over 41%, but roughly five years later in 2020, after that competition has been heating up, that share has dropped all the way down to just about 33%, which I think is clearly a testament to the growing threat of competition from giant companies like Apple and Amazon. And truth be told, I am very worried about that because you've got giant threats out there, it's gonna severely limit Spotify's ability to increase their prices, which they may need to do in order to help them reach profitability later on. But you've got giant behemoths like Apple and Amazon who are very profitable and they can afford to subsidize their music streaming parts of their business, these smaller businesses that they own, uh, then they can afford to actually keep their prices pretty low and even take some hits or losses on it because in the long run, they'll just kind of play the long game and try to beat out these other competitions. It's very hard when you're a small company and you're trying to compete with these giant ones who can afford to take hits on those smaller parts of their business. Spotify does not have that luxury. They are not profitable. And while I do love the moves that Spotify is making, like signing exclusivity deals for giant podcasters to bring on more users, those deals cost a lot of money. And at some point you're gonna have to be profitable in order to sustain what you're doing to, to, you know, to afford bringing in all of that growth. So in the long run, Spotify is gonna have to figure out a way to become profitable. And I would keep a very close eye on their balance sheet because I think their debt is probably going to start climbing. Now I think right now it's not too crazy. Their balance sheet, uh, current assets I think is like 2.4 billion. 
current liabilities with long-term debt, I think is around 3.4 billion. So it's, you know, it's not a good balance sheet, but it's not like a horrible, horrible one. I've definitely seen a lot worse. Uh, but I would keep a close eye on it because I think those debt levels are going to start climbing. And the the issue that I see with Spotify is that on one hand, they have so much potential. They have so much growth potential. There's different things they can do. And I think the markets that they operate in will become even larger in the future. And yet they've got all of this giant competition and they're not profitable. And I think investors are going to be wrestling with those two kind of things. And so I think it's going to be making for a very volatile stock because I think investors are going to be thinking, do I want that growth? But am I willing to pay the price for it in terms of huge competition that could really take out Spotify in the long run and also lack of profitability? What do I want to do here? I think it's going to make for a very volatile stock. Now, having said all of that, my personal opinion, I actually really like Spotify and I like, I, let me clarify. I like them as a spec play. I do not consider them investable because they're not profitable and they have giant massive competition from these giant behemoth companies. It's, I just can't, and I can't think of Spotify as an actual investable company in terms of I know exactly where they're headed in the future and it's just kind of a long-term investment. It feels a lot more to me like a gamble that Spotify will still be successful in the future, but they have a lot of things going for them. They've got a huge user base, a lot of which are free users that they can convert to paid, they can monetize it more. They've also got different areas that they can tap into. You've got music streaming that they're already number one. You've got a uh, video coming in, more video things that they can do. You've got podcasts. You've even got audiobooks that we didn't even really discuss. Spotify hasn't even really done anything with audiobooks yet. I think there's a lot of potential there to implement audiobooks as well, which they're already starting to do. If you ask me what's a good spec stock to kind of gamble on long term, Spotify would be way up there. And so for that reason, you know what? Is today at the <laughs> before recording this video, I felt like speculating a little bit. I felt like kind of gambling a little bit and I went ahead and bought some Spotify shares. I figure the stock is down a lot right now. I still think they have a lot of potential and I can readjust later. So I purchased some shares at around uh, let me see here, $232 a share, and it's way less than 1% of my portfolio. So it's a very tiny amount that I purchased, but the re I always do this with a, any kind of spec stock or high risk stock. I always go in very tiny. That way I go in with the mindset, okay, this stock is gonna keep going down or it's gonna go down. I go in with that mindset, so I'm not disappointed. When the stock goes down, I can buy a lot more because I barely purchased just a little bit. I buy a lot more, lower my cost basis, and on the other hand, if it actually goes up, well, then there's probably a good reason for that. Maybe they're getting closer to profitability. Maybe their business is performing better. Maybe they're doing well against that fierce competition. And in those cases, I actually start to trust the company more. It becomes more investable. Then I'm, then I'm okay with paying a premium price for it. So I'm okay with the stock going up and then I can still buy more later on as an actual investment. Right now, it's a speculative gamble. So I'd rather just buy a little bit here and then if it goes down and I still like them, then I'll add more as it continues to fall. So that's what I'm doing with Spot Spotify stock. Let me know what you guys think down below. Let me know if you think I'm an idiot. Let me know if you agree with me here, taking a chance on this one. Uh, let me know if you're invested in Spotify. I'd love to hear your thoughts uh, all down below in the comment section. I'll try to respond to as many as I can, but I hope I'm not forgetting anything. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you hit the like button if you did. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.